Eat, dog. Eat, dog. We be in the city. Hundred racks busting out the rapper. Hundred racks busting out the rapper. What I have is not enough. What I have is not enough. You don't understand that yet. What if you ain't got nothing? Cool. That's gonna send my son to college. That's everything. That's gonna send my son to college right there. That's everything. That's what you take off. Let's go. Take off. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, for sure. Make it on TV, it's your boy Church either. I don't even gotta introduce my dog right now, man. Atlanta Falcon, number 34, former Southeast Seminole, former Florida Gator, Mr. Brown, what's happening, man? What's good, what's good, bro? Ain't nothing, man. Last time we talked, we was at the uh, celebrity game. The college had finished, and we were talking about where you would land and all this different stuff. Now, you being the person that didn't get invited to the combine, you didn't get drafted, but you get on a team, with the Atlanta Falcons, work your way up to the star position, and then y'all end up in the Super Bowl, man. Like, what type of high it feel, bro? Man, to be honest, man, it's really just a blessing. I mean, you know, just to be put in position to have an opportunity to even be able to do all that. You know what I mean? Just, you know, being around the right people, you know, treating people right. I mean, really just not pretty pretty. Yeah. I mean, really, that's, that's the main, like, that's the key to my story. You know what I mean? Like, not burning bridges. I mean, like, I don't know if y'all know, but my head coach in the league was my defense coordinator in college. Oh, so I mean, like, not burning bridges, like, that's kind of like a key to, like, my story. Now, when you weren't invited to the combine, how did it make it feel? I mean, I was surprised. I mean, y'all whole defense and secondary went to the I'm combine. Saying. Like, I balled in college. Like, it ain't like I was, like, trash in college. Like, I, like, I balled. Like, I had a good career at Florida. Like, like, I'm like, I'm up on the wall at Florida. No. So, okay. like, I mean, really, just not getting invited. It was like a humbling experience for me. Like I'm like, dang, like, really? Like I mean, because going into it, like not getting invited, like that wasn't even a. I mean, really, like a thought in my head. Like I knew I was getting invited. Like, that was like, like so, yeah, like, yeah. Like, worry about not getting invited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you didn't get invited, that hurt you. Now, when you didn't get drafted, was that wasn't like, a surprise because you didn't get invited, or were you surprised still? I was still surprised. I mean, because I, I mean, even after I didn't get invited, I mean, I went to Pro Day, you know what I'm saying, ball that Pro Day, you know, deal with them. And, um, you know, like a few days on the draft, all the teams calling me and stuff, like, oh, you know what I'm saying? What's up, Mr. Poole? You know, like, this is a number, I mean, like, this is a number that we're going to be able to reach you at, and, you know what I'm saying, boom, boom. So, I mean, like, I'm thinking, like, I, I know I'm going to get that. I mean, it's seven rounds. I know somebody got to, I mean, feel some type of way about me. But, obviously, then nah. that didn't happen, how you felt? Man, it kind of hurt me, man, but at the same time, it motivated me. I mean, like, it made me just want to go hard and really just show them what I could do. Because I feel like I was counting out. Man. Yeah. yeah. Damn right. Honestly. Man, because y'all had one of the top secondaries in college football. History. History. For sure. And then, for you, I, I, it had to hurt. It hurt me, because I was like, yeah. I asked Toy, I'm like, what the What's going on? Why, yeah. why, why Brian ain't hit the combine? Wait a minute, Brian ain't get drafted. Yeah. But then when you went to the Falcons, when you got that call from the Falcons, yeah. what was that like? It was good. I mean, it was like all I was looking for was an opportunity. I mean, I knew I could play. I mean, it wasn't no. I mean, like I knew what I had. Like I, I mean, and I knew I could play because the guys I practice with every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, so it ain't like I'm like being cocky or anything, but like. I know what I could do. Like I know the guys y'all drafted in the first round. I practice with them every day. I know I'm just as good as them. Like so, I mean, like I knew what I was bringing to the table. So I mean, really, all I needed was the opportunity. They gave me a hell of an opportunity, man. I just, I just went for it in the biggest way, man. I took advantage of it. When you got to the Falcons, um, what was your role there? When they first they when they they had their first vision for you, your role was to be a backup person, a, a special team guy. Oh, uh, so. I mean, really, when I got there, I mean, they told me I was going to have an opportunity to compete. And I mean, really, I mean, that's all I needed was just an opportunity. I mean, like I said, like, I knew what I brought to the table. Like, I, I mean, like, I know what I could do. You know what I mean? So, 
gave an opportunity to compete. And I mean, by the by about week two, I mean, I was starting. And I mean, once I was starting, I, I just ran away with it. As the season progressed, y'all got better. Uh, playoffs, y'all were tremendous. Okay, thank you for the hit on Aaron Rodgers. Here by Poole at the very end. He doesn't see it. It's a clean hit. It's a good hit. But they... <laughs> and you surprised the hell out of me when you smashed uh, Russell Wilson. Yeah. Wilson. So we got a thing on our team, like, we say we're going to ride by them, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I mean, like, like, stuff like that, you know, that motivate me. I mean, like, that make me want to, I mean, you know, we talk about it, I mean, I want to bring it to life. Like, I don't want to just talk about it, I, I mean, I want to actually bring it to life. So, yeah. like, that was, like, the theme of the week, like, we're going to ride violently. So that was, I mean, that's, really, that's what I did. Yeah. Now, Super Bowl, yeah. I predicted it was going to be 31 to 28. I predicted that you would get the pick six on Tom Brady. Your home, some, somebody else on the team yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah. But yeah, I, yeah. I did think that y'all was going to lose because y'all yeah. was such a young team and inexperienced in that big-ass game. Tom yeah. Brady's number seven for him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that kind of factored into my mind. This is Tom. Yeah. So when y'all was up at halftime, what were in the, in the locker room, what was that conversation like? I mean, really, man. Had to go out and finish. I mean, obviously we didn't do it, but I mean, I mean that's all we had to do was just go out and finish. You know, that was really all we was talking about. You know, so to go out and finish. But I mean, obviously we did. You know, learn this experience. Now on the field, you had three holding penalties. Yeah, something like that. Three yeah. holding penalties. What What was happening? What was going on? Man? I don't know, man. You know, I mean, I'm aggressive. Yes. I mean, I like to play aggressive, man. And, I mean, a little bit, you know, they was letting us play a little bit, and just, I don't know, man, just just trying to play aggressive, man. I was trying to get out there. Yeah. Man, that conversation you was having with, I think it was Jude, it was Edelman, about that catch. When yeah. you saw that damn catch, that shit was, that shit was more uh, circus and fluke than the helmet catch to me. Uh, here's Edelman broken up, and the pass, it's Alford knocked it up into the air, and let's see who comes down with it. Oh, that's a catch. I caught it. Crazy, I swear to God. No way, look at that. Watch. Look at the No. No. Like, I mean, like, when it happened, I'm like, oh, there's no way. Mm -hmm. Why would you even challenge that? Like, that's, you know what I mean? Like, let's play. Yeah. Yeah, like, even when they showed it, I'm like, nah, that shit hit the ground. Like, as you see, I'm like, that shit hit the ground. Mm hmm like, no, man, like, I caught it. I'm like, hey. <laughs> then, like, like, I'm like, they showed the door of you, and I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, caught that bitch. Wow. Well, tell me how it feels to be a rookie and in a Super Bowl game against Tom Brady. It actually felt good. I mean, I mean, like, playing on our team, like, it's a lot of, like, older guys who, like, you know, like, some guys never made the playoff. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, not even talking about Super Bowl, like, you know, just making it to the playoffs is big. So, I mean, really just being a part of that. And, I mean, like, my first year, I mean, like, I walk in the locker room and everybody like, man, y'all school. Like, you like, know what I'm saying? Like, y'all think it's, you know, y'all rookie year, y'all think it's easy. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not. Really just going through all that, you know, talking to some of the older guys. And, I mean, really just realize the opportunity we had. Dream of a lifetime. Dream of a lifetime. Super Bowl Sunday. Take me through the beginning of your day to the end of your day. Uh... I couldn't really sleep. I mean, you know, I ain't really get much sleep. Um, you know, got up, ate breakfast. Uh, so we do a lot of meetings the night before. So I mean, you know, like then they're like, this is all you. Uh, I say, well, got up, ate breakfast. Really, was just getting my mind right, man. Just, 
know what I'm saying, just getting ready, man. And, you know what I'm saying, you know, put on my little suit, you know, we all suited up. And, Really just jump on the bus and just ready for war, man. Uh, uh, being fast. Nah, you're you not nervous? nervous, man. I don't really get nervous, man. What? I don't, that's, that's, that's the that's, biggest stage in the world. I don't really get nervous, it's man. Ready. I just be ready. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, don't really, I don't really get nervous. Man. What you listening to before the game? Super Bowl, I think I was listening to old Ross. I was on Port of Miami for the Super Bowl. Man. Yeah, like I took it all the way back. Oh. All the way back, yeah. Now, in the uh, past couple of weeks, man, you had some real personal information come out. Yeah. I was torn but when that information came out because, you know, I, I know you, and I was so happy that you slapped the league like that, yeah. how you did. But then on the other hand, I was pissed off because I know you, and then yeah. I know the mentality of the city that we in, and people, period, and when they made it public about how much money you really had made over the last season, yeah, I didn't like that. How you felt about that? I mean, I wasn't a fan of it. I mean, you know, I don't really like, I mean, get rid of my business in my pockets and, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And when, I mean, you know, when they get their income tax, they don't really lose how much they make. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. you know what I mean? But it's cool, man. But I just kind of look at it as, like, I'm motivating, you know, the gyps out there, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's possible. You know what I mean? I mean, I ain't, I'm from where y'all are from. Right. I mean, I went to the same school y'all went to. So, I mean, it's possible. What you tell the jits out there when you when you see them in Atlanta or uh, at, at home when they come up to you and they want I want to be just like you and uh, what you, what kind of advice do you give? Man, just work, man, take school serious, man. Just work. I mean, really, that's really how it is. Man. You just gotta work hard. I mean, and take advantage of the opportunities. I mean, because if you don't, who knows when it's ever gonna come back around? Right. Like, you gotta take advantage of every opportunity, max it out. Right. You never know. It may never come back around. I knew this man was going to make it. When he was in college, one day, and it was a couple of us, it was a group of us, somebody tried to get Brian to do something. Brian was like, nah, man. He did like this. He said, man, I'm focused on the M's. Try to get that bag. When he said that, I get that bag, man. and then I saw you again at the, uh, we was backstage at the Rich Gang concert, yeah. and that was after y'all, after y'all played for the state. Mm-hmm. And I saw your grind, man. I said, boy, look, you're going to make it, but just yeah. keep grinding. Grinding. Yeah. Look what happened, man. Like, what did you have to sacrifice in order to get to this level? I mean, really, just everything. I mean, really, my life. I mean, growing up, like, I hung out with a lot of, I mean, dudes that was in the streets. So, I mean, I, I could have easily done that. But, I mean, I want to do something different. Like, I want to really have something. You know what I'm saying? So, this, that's what I did. Shout out to Miss Lenita. Shout out to my mama, man. You know, you raised a fine young man, man. Yes, she did. That's my favorite. I know she proud. Right. Now you not now your cheeks and came became public. <clears throat> How you deal with the people coming out of nowhere? You got brand new ass cousin, uh, hand dots uh, and all this other shit. Dude, I mean me dog, honestly, I don't mind telling you. Nah. <laughs> I like, I can't do it. Like, cause I mean I, I got some bread, but I ain't I mean, it's gotta last me for the rest of my life. Like yeah. I ain't just trying to live like this while I'm in the league. Like, right. I wanna like, I'm trying to live good forever. Right. Like, you know, I'm rich forever. Rich I'm trying forever. to be rich forever. Like, you uh. know what I'm saying? So I ain't just, I mean, there ain't no handout. I mean, we all grown. Like, we grown. Right. Everybody grown. Everybody come before they self. Right. right. Everybody have the same opportunities. <laughs> like, I capitalize on mine. You got to capitalize on yours. Hey, we was talking earlier before the camera. And he said, man, look, I, get, I don't like when people say I change. Like, I ain't never give you no money before. I ain't never. I ain't never. I mean, you ain't never called me for no money. Like, like how did I change? Like, I, I've never done that for you, but you feel like I don't give you no money. I change. I've never gave you no money. Like, you changed by even asking, asking me for some money. You hear me at home, man. Give him a pound. Tell him you love him. Don't ask the man for no fucking money. Because no he ain't got none to give <laughs> In music, what you feeling right now? Ross. Ross. Oh, Rather you than me. Rather you than me. Is it leaving the uh, CD deck? Nah. I'm not fucking with Shuffle right now. Right now? Everything. What's your favorite cut off the uh, album? It's hard not to say Apple of My Eye. It's first one. First one. It's hard. I like that number in the doors too, though. Oh, yeah. That big thing. I like that number in the doors. Just, I mean, really, just the whole story behind it. You know, mm-hmm. I, you know what I'm saying? So I like that one. I, I like the little track, you know what I mean? Going at Birdman too. That was oh, yeah. 
feel like he just did it so like classy. Like he ain't like like he wasn't like he ain't like doing them in like a disrespectful way. Like he went at them in like like almost like man to man. Yeah. So I mean, I'll be looking for number thirty four. Brian Poole, for sure. Atlanta Falcons, all season next season. They're going back to the Super Bowl. Nah, bro, no, no. Y'all can go back another year. Next year? I see it in the hat. It's high year. I was going to wear a Florida State shirt, but I couldn't find it. I was going to do that, but I couldn't find it. I'm going to see you again, man. I'm going to come up to Atlanta and get an interview with you. Maybe they'll let me in the locker room. I mean, hopefully I can make it happen. Hey, <laughs> make it on TV in Atlanta. You hear me? It's church easy. Be pool. Half shell. We at half shell. Make it noise TV. And we out here. We out, man. Mr. Pool, how you liking the oysters? Man, I'm in love, man. This is like my favorite restaurant. <laughs> half shell. Y'all make sure y'all come. <laughs>